I was held at gunpoint the night before my test. I remember, like it was yesterday, held at gunpoint, this clown put a gun to my head. Like literally this guy in a clown mask, he's probably like 6'3". He's like, if you move, you're dead. All right, I'm here with David Carpenter. He is a life insurance sales executive yeah. for a major corporation, AIL. Yeah. David, welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me, Joel. Super excited to have you, man. I mean, I just got a chance to learn about your story yeah. and just connect with you and learn a lot more. And I, I always say this, people are gonna say, Joel, like, why are we talking, why, why are you interviewing a guy about life insurance of all <laughs> yeah. things? Like, how does yeah. this relate to health, fitness, uh, yeah. overall, you know, opt health optimization? Mm -hmm. But I always tell people, let's not play around. Yeah. Money matters. Yeah. Let's not let's not pretend it doesn't. Yeah. It does. And I really do think finding your passion or your dream <clears throat> and having that dream job or career, yeah. that matters and that plays a huge part in well uh, your wealth mm -hmm. contributes to your health. I so, agree. I'm super excited to have you. The yeah. other thing that I love to do in my podcast is interview people that are disruptive in their yeah. industry. And you are definitely <laughs> disruptive. So Thank you, man. super excited and, and, and humbled to have you on the show. I'm grateful to be here. Thank you for having me. So let's get into it. Yeah. You have a crazy story and I'm sure, you know, <coughs> you didn't just start off. You didn't have this, you're 28 years old. You didn't have this, I'm sure like, man, one day I'm going to be a life insurance agent. And then also uh, like own and like run a company and yeah. run a team behind it. So yeah. like, like kind of talk about that. Like how, what were the steps that kind of like you fell into and got yeah. here? That's a great question, man. So again, thank you for having me on. It's an honor to be here and uh, share, you know, my story. I'm so, I love just talking and, and pouring into people. So I guess it started when I was an athlete. I played basketball pretty much my whole life growing up. I thought I was going to be an NBA, you know, be in the NBA. And uh, I quickly realized I, I stopped growing and I wasn't as athletic as I thought I was going to be. So I had to pivot and business was, you know, the next way to be able to take care of my family and build a, a great life. So um, I got in network marketing when I was younger, okay, built a team up, the company ended up going under and I'm like, wow, this is great. Every, I told everyone I was going to be successful. Now I'm like that guy. And uh, I decided to wait tables in the meantime and I got really complacent in life. And um, during this time, you know, my girlfriend actually left me at the, at, uh, it was 2016. She had left me in the beginning of the year. And um, that was like a big realization that I need to do something different. Like she left me for a guy who was making like 80 grand a year. That one hurt. And uh, <laughs> but at the time that was double than what I was making. Right. That was like crazy. So yeah. uh, I decided I needed to look in the mirror and have that moment where I'm like, dude, you're better than this. Like you deserve more than this. You've got way more talent than this. What are you doing? So decided to look for an opportunity. I got a message on Facebook and this, he was telling me about this company is hiring. And, you know, he said it was life insurance. I was a little standoffish at first because I'm like, dude, this is like, I don't want to do like be around a bunch of old people and sell life insurance. It sounds terrible. Yeah. But I was open. Right. And I was seeking. So I went and met, uh, met someone that was really young and successful and had the life I wanted. And he had values, character. And I really trusted the guy, like his vision, everything. It just seemed like it fit me, right? Mm -hmm. I felt at home when I was next to him. And uh, I decided to commit. So I took my test, failed it, failed it again, failed it again, failed it again. And uh, this was like my fourth try. And at the time, again, I'm broke. I'm serving tables. And um, this was later in December. Are you just a terrible test taker? Because is this, or is this yeah. like a really hard test? You know, I have no first, idea. The first two, I'm like, didn't really study. The last two, I actually really, really studied. And just like completely locked myself in the room and just failed it. I don't know. Like, I guess not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. So. And, and, and also, like, if you fail it four times, because you're we're here in Arizona. Man, if yeah. you fail it four times, isn't it true that you have to, like, you don't get to t you don't get four tries in Arizona. Yeah. You got to go to a different state, yeah. right? Yeah, correct. Okay. So I had to go book it in, in another state, right, and be a resident there and have a place there. So I uh, I book it, and um, that week when I book it, I get a call. I'm waiting tables, and I have to go to the hospital. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. and my you know I got to go in the hospital. Found out the doctor sat me in a dark room, and he's like, hey, your brother Sean, you know, he was in a terrible accident. We don't think he's gonna make it. Long story short, lost my brother that week. Um, it was really, really tough. Mm. And I had to stay committed to what I said I was gonna do. And I had two choices. I was, okay, I'm gonna use this as fuel to be like, I'm gonna dedicate my life 
uh, this next year to my brother's life, or I can say, woe is me and feel and kind of like feed into the depression that was upon me. Right. Yeah. And I decided to make it, make and dedicate my first year to my brother's life. So Mm -hmm. I went and went to his funeral. Then I decided to take my trip to New Mexico. And that was, uh, that next week. I remember I had to borrow money from my mom for rent and my rent was 450 bucks at the time. That's how broke I was. I couldn't afford a hotel room. All my credit cards maxed out, just crazy depressed place in life. But I knew that it was eventually going to be a great story and had to keep fighting. That's all I knew is like, I had nothing else going like this had to be it. And I feel, you know, right before your biggest breakthroughs, you have a lot of adversity, man. And I was just up for the challenge. I was like, what, you know, I just got to fight for this thing. So I take the money. My mom gives me the 450 bucks. I look at her and I say, you're never going to have to, I'm never going to have to ask for money again. I promise. Mm-hmm. And I looked at her and I held true to my word on that. I booked a, I went to New Mexico that night when I'm staying there, the person that I'm staying with was someone I didn't really even know. And these guys were uh, not really doing the great, greatest stuff. They ended up getting robbed that night. I was held at gunpoint the night before my test. I remember like it was yesterday held at gunpoint this clown put a gun to my head like literally this guy in a clown mask he's probably like six three he's like if you move you're dead and i'm thinking in myself if i die tonight like my mom is gonna just i don't know what's gonna happen to her Mm. so i'm literally just like praying and like just hoping that it goes away and i was in touch thank god and people around me they obviously were and uh i got up got no actually didn't even get up i went from that place, no sleep, an hour away to take my test and ended up passing. (laughs) That's how I started for an all commission based sales job, man. Talk about like just being committed because I I, I knew that I had to do this. I knew I needed to change and I knew that wasn't going to be easy. And I accepted that challenge. Wow. Two things I think that are just really stand out about you and just I think in just general anybody that is an entrepreneur number one you keep talking about you know being committed and it's like you had hit so many pit, <laughs> so many walls so many walls and I always say the same thing yeah. too like even in my own life I'm thinking man I must be on the other side of this I'm like one hit away from a breakthrough I don't know yeah. where it's gonna be at but it doesn't feel like it yeah but I always tell my clients and, and anybody, even myself, my own self-talk is like, you're just one hit away from a breakthrough. Just keep going, just keep going. Yeah. The other thing is I find fascinating and I, the most successful entrepreneurs that I've ever met, they are decisive mm. and they're action takers. Yeah. And I feel like, <laughs> like you said, you were committed. Yeah. Like I'm taking action yeah. and I'm doing this no matter what. Mm-hmm. And that's, I think, what separates you from probably, man, everybody, yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the majority, right? Yeah. Because, and I, and I think you would say the same thing. I, I've heard this a lot. One of my mentors said, like, to be an entrepreneur, Joel, you have to be kind of crazy in the head. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. He's very wise. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm actually curious, though. What was the conversation you were having in your head at the time when you failed? You said four times, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like, I get it. Like, I get being committed and, and persevering. I love that about yeah. you. but wouldn't somebody say like, bro, it's life insurance. Like mm-hmm. there's so many other careers out there. Like yeah. what was the conversation in your head that you said, no, like this is something I, I really need to do. Was, yeah. do you remember? Yeah. I mean, I just saw someone that was like my age that was making money in it. And I just believed that I could do the same thing that they were doing. And again, I had no, I had nothing else. I didn't know what else to do. And I saw people getting into real estate and stuff like that, but I saw that it was starting to get saturated and it mm. was like, I needed to do something different. I've always been taught to like, go do the, go to the road that's less traveled, right? There's more opportunity there. So I, I was just like, man, this happens. This is going to happen for me. I'm a firm believer that it's not what happens. It's how you respond. Yeah. And I knew that I was going to be a crazy story one day. And I knew that again, like you're going to go through pressure. That's how diamonds are formed. And I knew that I just needed to endure just like a workout, like you do, right? It's like that extra rep, that one more, like mm-hmm. when you want to quit, you got to keep going. So that I'm just telling myself this, that it's going to be worth it in the end. And I'm just going to make it happen. I'm going to find a way to freaking win at this. Dude, I love that. I love that. Um, okay. So let's talk about, um, yeah. you know, you, you had, you have, you've had some quite a, some success. So, you know, Hey, you finally make it into life insurance <laughs> yeah. and, then I don't know if you're just like a natural or what, because you go from, you take a business that's from 600 K to 2.6 million in sales in like two years. Yeah. 
Now, it was how like many a year later? Yeah. Yeah. So, and then now, <coughs> how many years total are we in the? Are you um, I'm in my fifth year. Fifth year, and now you're up to six million in sales. Yeah. That's not normal, right? From my no. understanding, in, <laughs> in terms of normal. like building a team and, and yeah. life insurance sales. So yeah, so why why is that? How were you able to do that yeah. in a in a game? And and let's just say like life insurance has been around for a long time yeah. or a while at yeah. least. Like, did you reinvent like the wheel yeah. or like did you what were you doing different? I mean, what separates what you're doing compared to maybe just the rest of the people rest, in this yeah. game? It's a great question, man. It's, there's a lot there that I can boil down. I think I'm very coachable. And I think coachability has a lot to do with the action that you take behind what you're listening. Some people kind of they hear goes in one ear and out the other and then they do 50 percent. Right. Like I was someone that was, OK, you tell me what to do. I'll do it. And that's why my mentor chose me is because he knows if he tells me something, it's going to be done. So I'm just standing on the shoulders of giants, people that already have what I want. And I'm a doer. Like you said, I don't overthink. I don't just sit there. Like I put myself in very uncomfortable situations right away. I started growing right away, started recruiting right away. And I failed really, really fast, fast and a lot as quickly as I could. Then I've had a lot of dips. Like I went from 2.6 to like down to like 1 million. Like we, I think we finished like under, it was like 1.8 million or something like that the year after that. And then we grew up to 3.6 the year after. So it's like, I've learned a lot. I put myself in a position to be able to just quickly figure it out. Yeah. I just accepted the responsibility that I'm going to be the guy that's going to lead these guys and I'm willing to do whatever it takes. So a leader like that. And it's like, you know, I've had, I've went through pride issues when I, when I first got started, I was young, I was 22, starting to make six figures to like dipping. And a lot of people left me to, you know, rebuilding and being humble and doing things ethically and being more selfless as a leader, leading from the front, rebuilding. That's kind of how I built it back up. To now, like we're just we have like great people with great hearts, great intentions, and it's not about the pride, the ego. We do things the right way, and that's really why we're starting to scale it. I think is a is a really big reason. Yeah. Well, you must be doing something right because you're doing something. You're doing very well in an yeah. industry that they haven't seen that much growth. So yeah. clearly, you're doing something right. Yeah. I'm curious too. You know, and for, I can hit on one more thing. Yeah, please. I I really just saw that again. It, Life insurance is a lot of money in it, in it, and there's you know there's residuals. It's scalable, so I just saw okay if these guys can do this in other industries, other businesses. Well, why don't I just take this? It's a need. Families need it. When someone dies, there's a huge need. It's the most desperate time of someone's life. Most people are terrible with their money. Most Americans need this, right? Or they're going to be leaving their family with just debt. And that's Co it. Coffins are expensive, I found out. They so, are, yeah. very. 100%, <laughs> man. It's on average like $15,000 for someone to die. Yeah. So, correct. Anyways, I didn't want to cut you off. I just no, saw, I saw the need and I saw that, you know, there's, there's also people that are struggling financially. So, if I can learn how to sell and I teach some people how to sell, this thing can go pretty big. I love what you said too. And I've learned this concept that success loves speed. Mm. Meaning what you just said I run a ton of, ton of experiments. Yeah. So a lot of people, they think of success as this like step ladder. Like I'm going to mm -hmm. do, so, I do a lot of work, then I plateau, then, then yeah. things like kind of peel out and then so I true. do a lot of work, step ladder, right? Like this. Yeah. But if you really want to be successful yeah. fast, yes. you run, you do something, fail, do something, fail. You just keep mm -hmm. doing it. It's like a curly cue and it just keeps going up. Yeah. And you said the same thing. Like, yeah, I wasn't afraid to fail. I just kept failing and boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Look at results and results. You have some pretty good results. Thank you. So yeah. I love that. Spot on. Let's talk about, um, I want to, I want to talk about like who you serve and it's really important yeah. to me being, you know, coming from a career as a first responder, I know that that's a big community that you serve. So I do want to go into that, but before yeah. I do, let's talk about the dirty truth about life insurance. Yeah. Isn't it just a scam? I mean, let's yeah. talk about, uh, and, and maybe you can even hit on, like, uh -huh. I have term life insurance. I know there's whole life insurance. Yeah. I don't know. We probably won't get in the nitty gritty, but like, sure. what? yeah, I mean, what is, don't, do you hear that a lot? Like, yeah, man, I don't, I don't need life insurance. This is a scam. You're just trying to sell me something. Um, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, it's a great question. So to address the elephant in the room, if you're thinking that, you know, there are terms, term coverage, only like 2% of those actually pay out. So term stands for terminate. It's for a 10, 30, 20 to 30, but you're paying way less in premium. And you got to think about it. You're going to go waste that money on something that you don't necessarily need. And especially if you're a primary breadwinner for your family and you're taking care of people, it's very important to have a safety net, right? Just in case you prematurely die. 
Then there's whole life. It's more expensive. It's a guaranteed death benefit. And the way I think about it, that one builds up cash value. There's other benefits there. Uh, it's good to have both in my opinion. Uh, they definitely pay out. There's obviously things that you need to look into in terms of the company, uh, how much they pay out, what's their um, what's their rating for AM best is really important to look into and uh, what's their average payout time. So those are some key things to look into. But um, yeah, anyone that signs up for something, read the fine print, ask the questions when you're signing up. So that way you're not just surprised if something doesn't pay out. Right. So that's why I love our company is we don't really have that stuff. That's why we have the relationships with the police officers, firefighters, veterans. We pay and we work with the most dangerous jobs in America. And we have one of the we, we pay out really fast comparatively to most life insurance companies, too. Mm -hmm. OK. And then talk about that. Talk about who who's like your ideal client. Who are you guys yeah. serving the most? I love mm -hmm. that you're serving all these first responders yeah. and it, it means a lot to me. Um, but yeah, is, is there anybody else that you also serve yeah. as well? And yeah. can, kind of talk about that. Our vets, we serve our veterans, which I love. You know, a lot of vets uh, don't even realize that a lot of their you know final expenses aren't even covered. Uh, they have, you know, they get like $300, they get a flag, they're going to be, you know, buried somewhere, but they forget that there's a headstone, the casket, there's a lot, there's the, the military feed. doesn't take care of that. No, it's not completely <laughs> all waves. So wow. that's where we come in and we fill in the gaps and we, we educate people. So that way they can, you know, again, make sure their family doesn't have to come out of pocket on that day that they're grieving and be like, Oh, sh you know, like I got to pay yeah. for this too. And I got to, you know, the uh, flag is free, but nothing else. Come on. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty wild. So. Those are our veterans are a big market there. We serve credit unions, uh, union members, and also like teachers too, like associations. So we serve like 45,000 different groups right now. Wow. Okay, cool. Why, you know, anybody that's listening to this, they're going to see just, man, they're going to, they're going to see you and they're going to see like some of the success that you've had. And same thing that you saw with your mentor, like, yeah. man, I want to be like David. I want to be able to do the same kind of things that he's doing. Yeah. Um, you know, how, what would you tell them? And I guess why, why do you think life insurance being, being an agent and being a manager yeah. and an executive, why do you think that's like a really good vehicle mm. to building wealth? We know there's yeah. real estate, there's all kind of, yeah. there's MLMs, there's all kinds of things. Yeah. Why, why, yeah. Why life insurance? Man, that's such a good question. I mean, just looking at the other industries, um, in terms of, I think real estate's great. I think buying real estate's great. Investing, buying uh, investment properties, buying low, selling high. Come on, you like, that's great, get yeah. into that. Yeah. So I'm not saying don't do that stuff, but I'm saying you gotta have a vehicle that's gonna fund that, right? Um, so insurance is great because it's high commission, upfront commission, they pay a hundred bucks and you're getting like six, you know, six times the premium uh, upfront on average, right? Six, either six times or a full 12 times what they're paying upfront. So you can make cash quick, Fam, there's a huge need there. You can scale it, meaning you can build a sales team with it. Now you have leverage. Now you have leverage, right? Because you're teaching people and eventually they're going to be released and you're going to be able to duplicate and build a sales team where now you don't not necessarily have to sell all the time to make money. Another thing is residual income. So you're going to get paid. I'm a big fan of that, by the way. Love yeah. it. Man. <laughs> Most wealthy people are, right? Yeah. You get paid every time someone pays their premium for the life of the contract. So hopefully they live a great long life, but if not, we're still gonna be there for them on the worst day of their family's life. So those start to compound, and if you start to scale and build a team, you're gonna get a piece of all that, those sales on residuals too. So you got the residual side, you have the overrides, where you're teaching people how to scale it, and then at any time you wanna go throw down, you go throw down and go right business. Mm. So, I mean, there's just, I think it's a great way to make money, to invest money and build wealth. Here's another thing. Is it pandemic proof? Great question. Is it a pandemic proof business? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, we saw a lot of jobs, you know, they had to go to Zoom, they had to do all these things. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, is, is this business, can, can we do, is it pandemic proof? <laughs> yeah, that's really good. And also with the economy, cause you look at right now, man, uh, the mortgage industry tanking, you see real estate, like a lot of agents out of work right now because people aren't buying houses. Yeah. So is insurance right the right thing? Absolutely. It's an it's a stabilizer to the economy. It's actually one of the most stable industries because it just never goes away. Yeah. People always need it. When things are happening and people are out of work, they actually look at their policies because people are in fear. 
And mm-hmm. I was saying sell in fear, but it's just an opportunity where 2008, we grew like 20%, 2020, we ended up going virtual, which set us to another level. I was belly to belly in home sales like this uh, before that. <laughs> so you can imagine the opportunity we have now. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just secure. People need it no matter what time of year you sit with someone that has a need there and you explain it, you, you create the problem there, right? You show them what gap they're missing and what their family's responsible for when they do pass away. And if they love their family, they're gonna buy. Yeah. That's it. You also have like an incredible following and incredible Instagram following. Are you like the most like well-followed uh, life insurance agent out there? I have to imagine, man. I mean, yeah, you have yeah. a really cool page and yeah. a lot of good interaction Thank there. you. Um, yes, I'm very, very well-known. I don't know if I'm like the most well-known. Yeah. I The reason why I thought that was so big to build the brand and invest in that is because you think of like real estate, you think of Grant Cardone, you think of Gary Vee and yep. other industries. I'm like, well, no one's an insurance guy. So why yeah. don't I just be that guy? Love that. So just like day one, and I've inspired a lot of people to be able to do the same thing. And I think that's really why the brand's big because I am very well known in the life insurance space. Yeah. So I don't know, Yeah. but uh, that's the goal. So we're working on it. Yeah, no, but I think it's cool because it's not, and, and I and I jokingly say life insurance, but you're yeah. so much more than life insurance. Yeah. We, we talk about all, just the mindset, yeah. you know, the the gratitude, the health. Yeah. You, you're doing everything. It's just, yeah, this is also my day-to-day job yeah. that makes me money and, and pays the bills. And, you know, you're able right. to buy your mom a house. I mean, there's some amazing things. Like, these are the stories that matter. And that's why the brand is, is so cool and, and big, right? Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you, you know, what do you think... You know, you got youngsters coming in. They yeah. they're inspired by you. They wanna they wanna live that David yeah. Carpenter life, or just even if they're not. But yeah. what is the most common mistake that you see people starting the game and mm. life insurance, or, or just sales, or what do you see yeah. when they come through your doors that you kind of know like this guy's probably not gonna make it. He's not gonna be a success versus mm-hmm. the people that are. Mm-hmm. I think it's a commitment level. There's you got to start with that. Are they willing? A lot of people aren't willing to do the the, the nitty gritty. You see a lot of the lifestyle and you know we have to promote that because obviously that's what you get after the grind and you know but are you okay with getting told no two times to every yes are you okay with getting the phone hung up on you are you okay with getting a lot of no's and kind of being disheartened are you okay with having weeks where you're really discouraged because you haven't made a sale right that's the yeah. that's the reality and that's the truth it's all commission no there's no salary here so, but with that being said, you have complete control over your skill set and your mindset to be able to continue to learn and grow to eventually when you get that proper skill set, you learn the script, you're way more smooth, you're way more, your posture's better, tonality's better, then that's when you can make the big bucks. So a lot of people, they're just not willing to commit to that process, right? I say be aggressive with the process, be be patient with the results. Mm. It's not an overnight success. This is not a get rich quick. If you're thinking that it's not the right thing for you. Um, So that's the reality is, are you willing to do whatever it freaking takes to get X, Y, and Z that you personally want? Because if not, this probably isn't the right vehicle and you probably should reevaluate your goals and dreams. Everybody always talks to about like passive income and like we were talking about it and it sounds great. Like, oh yes, passive residual income. And it is, Yes. but let's not be, you have to work to get that passive income. (laughs) You have to actually do, you have to do the work. Yes. And uh, I think like you said, they look at your brand and they think, oh, he has such a glorious life. Yeah. Yeah. You weren't there the four times I failed. You weren't there with my, when my brother died, you weren't there when the clown mask showed up and a guy put a gun to my head. And so nobody knows that story. They just see, oh, there's, you yeah. know, there's, there's a photo of you with a Bugatti and, yeah. and, and, and it, life is good, but yeah. it took work, man. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And not only that, man, like people quitting on you, people betraying you, people, mm. clients like canceling and, you know, weeks where you're, you're, you're scared and you don't know and like you've overspent and you're, you know, you're just, there's so much that goes into it, but it is so worth it once you continue on and you finally get to that point where it's just like wow i can i'm actually really good at this this is actually really simple i got this and then it's like boom all the money it's like it's not an overnight success but when you do make it it feels like it is you don't yeah. even remember all the yeah. crap that you really went through once you go through it you're just like wow this is good just like running a marathon you're like it's hell right then you get done you're like wow like i don't even really remember that i just now know that i finished and i feel freaking great yeah 
and then you're on to the next one. Yeah. Talk about buying your mom a house and just how cool and how special that was. Yeah. Man, I like, I get emotional even thinking about it, like even visualizing it. My mom's, uh, my mom was a single, like she, she raised me as a single mom. She took care of my brother and my sister, um, and put herself in debt, took me to all my club sports, was just really behind in debt. And I paid off all of her debts for her the first thing. And then I bought her her house Mm. and, um, it was just, I just felt like life was complete. Like if I had to pass away, I felt like I, I had a meaning there because like I just loved her so much because of the sacrifice that she's done for me. And um, just to see her a little bit happier and a little bit more peaceful compared to where, where she was. Like she was renting in that house my brother had obviously died in. So mm-hmm. she had to, you know, be in there and it was small and it was just just not good so to work my butt off to be able to get her out of there to put her in a place where she's in peace just fills my filled my heart with just gratitude and joy i can't even describe it but all the stuff that you got to go through to have just a moment of that feeling is like worth it yeah that's so huge and i think like that's the message that people need to remember like this is what all that hard work and no matter what vehicle you're doing whether it's life insurance real estate whatever like this there's so much more to it like this is and this is what you get to do um that's amazing what i'm curious any you know you've got so many awesome (laughs) things going on and just what you're doing in terms of building your team and growing even more and as far as growing the brand any exciting projects that you're working on right now (laughs) um i gotta i mean these podcasts like we want to keep these things going i I want to eventually be on like ed my lets i want to do speaking events eventually write a book eventually uh, there's a lot of like long-term goals that I want. I'm also planning on moving to, to Florida, building a team out there. I love to travel. So I'm enjoying this, like, you know, the stage that I'm in now in life where it's a little bit more established. Uh, but those are, those are some of the things that are in the works, buying more properties, um, just and living life to the fullest, get working on getting in the best shape of my life right now. Um, and just working on myself every day. I'm consumed in growth right now, just locked in. And uh, trying to become the best version of myself. If somebody, that's awesome. And, and if somebody watches this podcast and they see this and they're like, man, I love David. I want to connect with this guy. Yeah. I, I know, like, same thing like you when you saw yeah. that mentor and you just knew this was, this was right. Um, is there anything like, what should people, I mean, yeah. we'll talk about it at the end of the podcast where yeah. they can find you. Yeah. But really, like... Um, how can people help you or how yeah. can you help them if they yeah. want to get started? It's, you know, Absolutely. what, what can people do? Basically what, um, what do you need help with in going to the next level? I'm yeah. just curious, like what are you looking for? for? So our goal is to be at a hundred million. Like we said before, we did six last year. So goal is to be at a hundred million by 2030. Um, so we're looking for the right, who, who's even close to that, David. I'm just curious. Like, no like, one's even close to it. Like, like what's the, what's a good number? Uh, they're like, you than... know, there's people at like 12 million that are like okay. in the position that I'm in and stuff like that, doing a million a month. We've done a million in sales in a month twice, but it's, you know, we we're working on scaling it up. So a hundred million is a big deal. hundred million is yeah. a huge deal, but yeah. you gotta think like, yeah. I want to think huge because yeah. that, that is going to push me to be, it's not even about the hundred million. It's about who I need to be to even have a hundred million dollar company. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, I just want, you know, we're looking for the right talent. We're looking for the right people where we can pour in and mold and people that are really committed, that are willing to do the work that just have not really found the vehicle like I was. Um, so that's, it's a mutual benefit, yeah. right? Like we teach you, you help us. We, we help you. Yeah. You pour into them and then they get to grow and then they get to build teams. And then yeah. it's that, that law of reciprocity and it just keeps going over Correct. and over. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I want to jump into some lightning round questions with Let's you, go. but before I do, is there anything that I didn't ask you that you wish I had? Um, I think, uh, I think a good thing is just be patient. Just make sure you're patient. Like just everybody talks about the overnight, like I'm talking about, I want to rehit on that. Just make sure that you're patient, whatever you're doing, just go all in on it. I don't, I've never really seen anyone that's very successful that has not went all in, burned the bridges, and just said, you know, there is no freaking plan B. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, I'm going to go make a, uh, a way, and if there's no way, I'm literally going to do whatever it takes to make the damn way. Yeah. Like, you got to be that fully committed, all in. Like, and if anybody's in the way, like any relationships are doubting you, it's time to cut the strings. It's time to cut those relationships out and just know that you have that vision in your heart for a reason. Mm-hmm. Like, 
whatever you want to believe in, like I believe in God, like, it, you know, it's there for a reason. He put that there. Those, that thing is like your gift. Go freaking chase that thing because guess what? The rest of the friends, they're going to say, oh my God, I'm so proud of you later on. They might not believe right away, but commit, go do whatever it takes because life is so much better when you go all in. I love that. That actually brings, I'm glad you brought that up because I have actually, actually have another question about that. What do you, because you were even talking about it. Hey, there's times where like even I like yeah, doubt man. myself or people, they, they, Constantly. they, they, you know, they turn their back on you yeah. and then, or you have to, you lose a million, then you have to go back yeah. and like rethink and reorganize. What's the self-talk? What's, what do you, what Great do you question. do to bring yourself back? You're saying, be patient, be patient. Yeah. I get it. Love so, it. but what do you do? Love it. So my morning routine's huge. So I write out my goals, present tense. I speak them out loud and I and it's like they're getting in my subconscious. Mm -hmm. You believe your own voice more than anyone else's. Remember that. So when you speak every morning. Every morning, Love constantly. This. So I do my reading, I do my podcast, I'm pouring in, and then I do my lifting. I do I call it mind, body, and spirit. Mm -hmm. And every day after my readings, I speak my goals out, present tense, when a state of belief. So that way when I go ahead and I start my day. It's, I'm going to freaking crush my day. Like, it's done. Like, I'm built. I poured in, and I'm ready to go, to pour out. Love it. Okay, that's amazing. I say that, I, I talk a lot about that, too, about reprogramming my, my subconscious. Because, you know, I grew up yeah. with a belief of, like, go out and get a 9-to-5 job. Uh -huh, go too. get a pension. <laughs> go get a 401k. Yeah. Get a white picket fence. Get married. Have a couple of kids and uh -huh. have an amazing life. Yeah. Well, being an entrepreneur is none of that. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. I had to reprogram a lot of things. Yeah. And I think you would say this too, like the people that are in your life that are living the nine to five life. And that's yeah. not, that's not bad. Yeah. That's, that's a great life. Cool. But those people, they are not the people you ask for advice because no. they're going to tell you, go back and just get the nine to five job. Yeah. It's so much easier. You, you get so medical hard. benefits. But now on the other side yeah. is this other side of greatness, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. Okay. Let's jump into some lightning, lightning round questions. Okay. I'm curious if there was maybe a choice or, mm. or was there, was there a choice or choices that you made in your life that made you who you are today? What do you think they would be or was a choice? Yeah. Um, just never quitting. Even when the doubt, like we all get the same doubts, man. We all have those times where we're like, we don't feel good. You know, this and that, like we get attacked, right? Mentally, especially when you're going after something big, you're like, you're crazy. Why would you ever think that? Like we all have those same thoughts, but it's just not giving into that, right? And find your, find whatever that is, your routine or your, uh, whatever that is to get in this better state to can, to continue on. And I think that was like the most important decision I made is not to quit on my test, not to quit in the business when things were tough. And to continue to like, hey, let's find a way to win. These problems are opportunities later. Because once I figure this problem out, then nothing's going to freaking stop me later. Mm -hmm. It's so funny because when there's failure, which we hate to get, we, yeah. we try to push that away. Yeah. But that's the only way we learn. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. why am I so scared to fail? Like, that's actually yeah. a good thing. That's the only time I get wisdom. It's so true, you man. Know? It's frowned upon, but that's just reality. Anyone great will tell you that it's great to fail and just fail faster. Yeah. Why wait? Yeah. Love that. I'm curious. You're such a force in just everything you're doing in the entrepreneurial world and, and even really health and wellness right world. Here. You know, who do, who inspires you or is there anybody that you follow? Yeah, that's great. Uh, a lot of the same mentors that you're talking about the Jim Rohn's, you know, uh, I love like the Les Brown. I love the uh, Brian Tracy's. My mentor, Dustin Vinny Camp, he's like the guy that I saw that his life was you know, what the I wanted life. to be, the yeah. end life. And, um, another one is, um, Rick Altig, who's our chairman and is our founder. And then my parents, like my mom inspires me, man. She like worked mm. her butt off and grinded and just, just didn't even care what she personally had as long as we were good. So, you know, my family and, um, yeah, I, I, my friends inspire me. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Ed Milet, I would say is another person I really, really look up to. I think he's a wonderful guy and crushing it crushing life so yeah yeah I, what i love about ed too is like he's just uh he's just so genuine too yeah. and so you love to see someone who's like really successful and humble and, yeah. and embodies all those core values and then and is also successful like yeah. i love that Me too the other thing just to highlight i think to talk about you is just you, you your family and you know before we started you even said oh hey my my mom and dad might like swing by so that told you know kind of tell them to keep it down and i thought oh why and they're like you're like oh they just like to come hang out and i just thought yeah. that was so cool that your parents like that's they want to just come hang out with you it's just yeah. to, to be around you and just to, that that 
that joy, like that's, that's awesome. And so Thank like you, having man. your mom be an inspiration is I, for people that don't know, like, yeah, you mean it. So yeah. Thank you. I'm curious. I'm a big reader. Yeah. Any, any, is, you can, sure we could talk about all these books to read, yeah. but is there like a top one to three that just sticks out for you that yeah. had a huge impact on your life? And you'd say, Hey, you guys should go out and read this book. Yeah. Um, other than like, you know, my faith, which is obviously the Bible, I would say think and go rich is a really, really good one. Uh, the psychology of sales by Brian Tracy, also another gem. Um, those would probably be some ones that I would start with. And then rich dad, poor dad by Robert Kiyosaki really kind of opened up my mind to getting into the big business world rather than being an employee. Uh, so I would say those are my top three that if you haven't read those yet, those are some great ones to start with. People talk crap about Kiyosaki. I read Cashflow Quadrant and yeah. same thing. It yeah. changed the way I thought. I was like, whoa, Rich, actually the original Rich Dad yeah. I read that too. And I was, as a young, in my 20s, I was like, wait a second, I've been told to do all these other yeah. things. And that really changed me. So, yeah. you know, say whatever you want. But Facts. I think that was- You went great, man. People are going to talk crap. It's just, you That's know. That's true. There's yeah. like an insecurity in them that they bring out and it's like, ah, oh, like, let me, you know, this guy sucks. Yeah. I, I know you already mentioned it, yeah. but- let's just talk. I, I'm a big fan of also rituals or hacks or practices, yes. anything other than obviously your morning routine, but mm-hmm. is there, I don't know, like we got a lot of entrepreneurs that are doing cold plunges every day, oh, but is yeah. there anything that you're doing other than like, which I think yeah. is the same for me is the mindset work in the morning, mm-hmm. but anything else that you would say that you do gratitude journaling or anything like that? Um, you know, I do mentorship. Like I really pay for a life coach. I, um, Add a lot of value to my coach's life, but he adds a ton of value. I would say find a freaking mentor, man. That'll change your life. That's like a ritual that, you know, mm-hmm. hey, every day, how are you growing? That's a great question. And, um, you know, I think intentionally my line is 1% plus better every day. And it's like you might not be where you are want to be today, but if you're freaking committed to growth, life's going to be beautiful later. Just get freaking better. I want to wrap things up, but I do just hit on something big. And because it's been bothering me not about you, but about yeah. a lot of people that I work with and they refuse to spend money and invest in coaches or invest wow. in anything. Right. Or it's like even like a small amount. And I don't know about you, but like I've spent a lot of money. I, I've been telling people like how much I spent. Cause I want them just to kind of understand. Yeah. It's not like I'm better than you, but I spent 30 K to be in a mm-hmm. mastermind to learn how to so grow smart. a business. Right. Yeah. Um, even when I was like broke, mm-hmm. I, now I'm at the point where like, even if I don't have a lot of, I'm like investing even more. Yeah. Cause like, I know like, Same Oh, way. but this is going to get, this is going to get me something else. Yeah. So what is your thought process for, for people like that? Or even for like you, yeah. when you were starting out, they're like, I don't have, I have $400. I can't, I can't afford to invest. Yeah. I can't, you know, like <laughs> go take what, a credit card out. Yeah. Yeah. What do you yeah, say to these people? I right? would say like, you want to multiply your money. It's what is it doing in your bank account? Like it's actually losing money. So the most important investment is yourself, your mind, in your association, because if you can go to an event where you spent, you invest, that's the thing is they're thinking they're spending when you're investing mm. it. It's a tax write off if you have a business. Second of all, uh, you're gonna be around people that can give you one idea that will take your business for 1 million to 5 million. So did you even spend money or did you multiply it? Ooh, that's the power statement right there. <laughs> Get that, yeah. let's make that an Instagram reel. Amazing, dude. Yeah, I love that. Uh, it's so true. I sure. mean, I'm so happy you said that because it just been it's been irking me a little bit oh, with man. people I'm just huge. not not wanting to invest, and I'm just like, man, like I'm. And that's I'm, the reason why they're they're asking why am I stagnant? You know why 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 can't I just like 10x this? Well, it's like because you're not willing to go invest. The people that are like really really growing the most, they're investing the most. Guarantee it. You know what's cool too is the idea that you don't have enough money. It's just a belief. Correct. It's yeah. just. It's just an idea. That's so true, man. I love <laughs> right? that. Yeah, it is. Like we could go on a whole podcast about that. I'm sure you could <laughs> oh talk God, about that yeah. too. Like <clears throat> you don't have enough money. Like I'm sure I could find some money. So somewhere. what's changing? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Well, what are you going to do about it? Yeah. It's an idea. Like if yeah. I, if I told you right now, I'm going to cut your left eye out uh-huh. in, sorry, I don't know why I picked the left eye, uh-huh. but I'm going to cut your left eye out in a week. If you don't uh-huh. get, sh- give me 10 grand. I bet you would figure out a way to, you probably might even steal. You might figure out, but you'll figure out a way to do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And people, anyways, it's an, it's an idea. It's a, I agree. Yeah. It's an excuse. Yeah. All right, man. 
Last but not least, where yeah. can people find you, connect with you, just learn more about you? What's the yeah. best way for people to do that? Uh, Instagram is the best way. Um, it's David E. Carpenter on Instagram. I have a website. If you want to work with me and you're like, hey, this is like what I've been looking for, davidecarpenter.com. And I'm um, also on TikTok, same thing, David E. Carpenter. If you're, if you're on there, we're going to be doing YouTube and stuff like that. But I don't try to sell you anything. I just provide value every single day. Even if you don't work with me, if you're in the sales space, if you're an entrepreneur, I'm also in fitness working out. You know, I try my best to provide value and be an example for people. So check me out. Let's go. Love it. Yeah. David Carpenter, let's go. Let's Thanks go, for being baby. On the show, brother. I appreciate you so much, man. Thanks for having me.